Welcome back to TYT Sports here with Damien Carville, who just provided his perspective on Liverpool, his favourite team. <laughs> <laughs> um, so make sure to stick around, check that out. But we're going to talk about the most overrated Premier League strikers at the moment. So we're going to we're going to go through our positions uh, as the weeks go on. But right now, uh, one of the most prominent positions in the league, you've got the likes of Diego Costa and Aguero, who of course are overrated, right? <laughs> I mean, they're, they're way mm. overrated. But we're going to talk about uh, who we believe are the most overrated players in the Premier League. So we're going to go to you, Damien, first. Who's your number one? Okay, surprise, surprise, <laughs> Francis. Let's wait for it. Mario Balotelli. Jason just broke down behind the camera. It's his favourite player, Mario Balotelli. Yeah, so I mean... I have to agree, but I also was t was a little. I was, I was not going to choose him directly straight away because I felt like other people were maybe more overrated simply because I don't think the Balotelli is rated anymore. Like yeah. to be overrated, you have to be rated in the first. I think uh, when he signed for Man City, you would have been like, yeah, he's overrated because he didn't deliver as much. But now at sure. Liverpool, he's coming back for his second term. I still had him in my overrated list, but he's not even rated that much anymore. Yeah, <clears throat> I would agree. I yeah. think he's renowned. He is renowned as a, a as essentially a flop. Yeah. Um, I never really have known what he does. I've never seen him dominate a game. Yeah. He has a, probably a good highlight reel. He will score <laughs> these wonderful goals from time to time. He yeah. will tweet that he scored a great goal in training. Yeah. But he doesn't bring a massive amount to the team. He, I, he would be a good PR man for a team. You know what I mean? He'd be a good public relations guy to kind of bring some press to the team, sign in, right. maybe do a couple of stints on Instagram and then kick him out to go to another team. So, I mean, he'll bring money in probably for people to right. shirt sales, but he's not going to do anything for the team. Right. All right, who's your next one? Next one is Radamel Falcao. It's another go-to. I left him out of uh, mine because I just don't think he's had as much of a chance. But what do you think? Why is he overrated? So Falcao is one of the world greats. Yeah. And I, I'm very strong on that. His goal-scoring record is better than one in two. Very yeah. few players in the world have that. He's a, he's a great goal scorer. He's done it at the highest level. Portugal, Argentina, Spain, France, now playing in the Premier League. He's not just done this with, with low-level teams. He's, yeah. he's got a wonderful record. I think there are two issues with Falcao. I think one, one of them is... He, his injury record, yeah. and Manchester United don't yet own his contract as a player. So for United to spend $60 million on Falcao is still a big risk. I think you could, you could have a safer bet for your money. Yeah. Second thing is, he's a predator, yeah. and very infrequently has a predator been a massive success in the UK. Yeah, I agree. And I believe that, again, you can get more for your money with players who can do more outside of the box as well yeah. for 60 million. And I, uh, he reminds me a lot, very similar to Shevchenko, who came, who could do it at any other level, who was one of the best strikers I have ever seen, struggled a little bit in the Premier League to try it, because he is a predator, he's in the box striker, the only one who strikes my memory, who came in not as much with the same reputation, but left with an even better one, Van Nistelrooy, who was at Manchester right. United, he could pounce on anything in the box. But there's so many out there, like Amatasia Kesman as well, these in-the-box strikers, they need to be able to understand the Premier League game. Falcao relies a lot on his game of his head and ability, but as I said in my previous tactics clips, Manchester United are starting to use Van Persie as our main striker up top. So he's mm -hmm. kind of taking his role as a second striker, but he's not used, he's not used to that. Right. They've been Colombia's number one, Monaco's number one, Atletico Madrid. So um, he could be definitely considered as, as, as overrated at this moment in time. And your last one, definitely going to ruffle some <clears throat> feathers for me, I think. Yeah, somewhat controversial. Wilfred Bonny. Just signed with Manchester City, the biggest one of the biggest teams in the league for his goal scoring ability, but you're going to say he's overrated. Wilfred Bonny is an excellent footballer. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. His goal scoring record stands up to scrutiny. Yeah. Not really at the highest level. Swansea, with the greatest respect, not the highest level. Vitesse yeah. in Holland, not, not, not exactly the, the best teams out there. I believe he's a short term signing for Manchester City. Yeah. I don't believe he can sit at the top table long term with the likes of Aguero and with the likes of the players that yeah. are really going to be needed to, you know, to take City to the next level. Yeah, and that's what I just want to see how he'll partner Aguero. Because you know Aguero's a star man up top and uh, he's redefined what it is to be a front striker because front strikers are supposed to be big, huge, strong, hold the ball up. Aguero, I always talk about it in tactics, he's the best lone striker in the world because he's so small, low centre of gravity, makes those dynamic runs. Agreed. But uh, Wilfred Bonny, the only thing I can imagine him is provide more headed goals. For Manchester City, if they get the ball in the box area, uh, in the box like quicker, he can definitely counter with his head and ability. He's done well for Swansea, so that's how I don't think he's overrated at the moment. I maybe will agree after a few games when I see him in there, he might do the whole Dembaba thing when he went to Chelsea, just sure. flop there. So it could be definitely a so, similar so choice. So Damien, what what else do you think uh, Boney has done? I mean, what else can he do to, to make his case that he's a valuable asset? Because you said his goal record stands up to the test of time. You know, playing in the Premier League, 35 goals and 70 appearances. We rate that playing in the top division, a goal in every two games is top class. Yeah. His, sure. pri his price tag is about 30 million pounds. That's about the going rate for a player of what he's done. I mean, yeah, granted, 
you know, the 58 goals and 77 appearances of Vitesse, you know, you, that gets cheapened because, you know, it's an it's a inferior league sure. in terms of the competition. But, I mean, what, what do you think he's done that makes it so that he doesn't deserve the merit of those other players in that same kind of caliber? I believe he lacks the mobility that Manchester City needs, and mm -hmm. I believe he lacks the genuine craft at the highest level for a team like Manchester City to, yeah. to challenge for the Champions League. Yeah, and that's what you're going to have to basically see what he's like in this European stance because if you're there's plenty of players if Ricky Lambert is for one like Southampton right. you know what I mean he just he, he was Southampton star man he reminds me a lot of Wilfred Bonny the way he's good in the box he's mobile he's, he's good when he gets a ball into his positions his movement to get into these areas isn't the best right. but I think with Manchester City you need to have the full round striker Jovetic who is going to go on to mine I can just lead into that right now is one of my most overrated strikers because he's good when he gets a ball into those areas. And I think Bonny is like that. He's got some good service in there at Swansea. But at Man City, you can't just rely on that. They, re they rely on fluid movement, one-touch football, getting yourself into these spaces. And I think that Jovetic, for the price tag, I think I've seen he's still valued at £35 million. Pounds, and that's still that's way overrated for me, considering how much how little he's kind of provided. He doesn't get as much chance as he maybe should, but Aguero was out there for two or three weeks. He was out. He didn't come in and kind of take the Premier League by storm the way right. he's expected. So I think that he is overrated for me. And in my final one for overrated is Ricky Lambert. Just as I touched on him as well, it's the, it's the sheer price value. I think it's kind of unfair a little bit on Lambert because when you get picked from a smaller team, and but thrown into this bigger team and expected to carry out the same performance, you're now uh, like you're no longer a big fish in a small pond. You're now one of the bigger fish. You're expected to compete with all these players. I just don't think that Lambert uh, approaches the game with the same tenacity that he did at Southampton. But he's still one of the highest valued English strikers in the game because he has that whole Alan Shearer persona, getting in the box, roughing people up, and scoring goals. But he's still nowhere near that quality. I didn't think he should have moved to Liverpool. I thought mm -hmm. he should have stayed at Southampton. So that's going to round up my list. He Great. is for me. The three, the other three overrated players in the Premier League. Let us know what you think. Who's your three overrated strikers in the Premier League? Make sure to stay tuned as we're going to be bringing you the most underrated. And of course, we'll be going position by position. Thanks, Damien, for joining us. Thanks, Joaquin, Thank from pitching in back there in the studio. Thanks again. Thank